Okay, let's talk about our sport vector machine. Before we study SVM, uh, let's talk about linear classifier first. Uh, linear classifier is, is a classifier uh, which can be represented as a, a line. So this is the form of linear classifier. So this is straight line, this is slope, right? So uh, if for a new for a new data x, it, it's if the function value is above this line, this line, then class value is red, and uh, the function value is below this line, then uh, its class value is red. Okay, so something like this. So uh, this is the definition of linear classifier. We have seen. Uh, linear classifier before when we study uh, neural net okay the, the perceptron was linear classifier and uh, there are a couple of more uh, linear classifier in machine learning and naive basis and logistic regressions are also known as linear classifier but there are some uh, controversy around this issue whether these two algorithms are linear classifier or not. Because in naive basis case, naive basis is linear only when it is represented in a logit form, L-O-G-I-T. And in logistic regression case, it is linear only, it is only if it is represented in a logistic function form. Okay, so, that, that, so a little controversy there. But many people say these are uh, linear classifier as well. Okay, so you can say naive basis and logistic regression is kind of a naive is linear classifier in in a twisted form. Okay. So anyway, uh, we don't use linear classifier often today because linear classifier is is too simple. Okay, and almost every real world problem is non-linear. So, you know, it is almost impossible to solve a nonlinear problem using linear classifier, right? That's why we don't use linear classifier anymore. So that's the problem of linear classifier, okay? So in this chapter, we study uh, SVM, and SVM is one of the uh, state-of-the-art classifier. So up until uh, the deep learning comes along, around 2010 something this SVM was the most powerful algorithm and it is still very com competitive okay very impressive algorithm okay and what but what is very interesting is SVM one of the state of the art algorithm is linear classifier okay so yeah it's very interesting okay one of the most powerful algorithm is linear classifier so this algorithm is a very interesting algorithm. Okay, we're gonna study this SVM in this chapter. So as I said in a previous slide, uh, almost every uh, real world problem is nonlinear, right? So uh, the, the most of machine learning algorithms are nonlinear as well because of that. So if uh, algorithm is linear, it's very limited algorithm and uh, we call it a toy algorithm right because it's not to scale in real world and uh, many people are actually mistaken by uh, non-linearity of real world and many people believe you know, everything in real world is linear so that sometimes it causes problems and in down in this example here it shows the relationship between the income and the happiness of life which is non-linear so svm is a linear classifier okay that means uh, svm uh, classifier is represented as a straight line right so uh, in SVM, what we do is basically uh, we look for a straight line which divide, in this case, these two data set, right? So, uh, but there are many uh, 
lines which divide these two data. So let's take a look at these two data, P1, P2, and uh, see which one is better. Okay, P1 is better, P2 is better. Uh, intuitively, P1 looks better than P2, but let's take a look. In uh, B2 case, this line is very close to this data. And suppose we have another data which is very similar to this one then that data should be somewhere near this data. So let's say that data is here. This data is very similar to this one. But if you use B2 line, the class value of this is opposite to this data. Okay, This data is very similar to this one, but it is uh, its class value is different, opposite, right? Which is, which is no good, right? We don't like it. Yeah, same thing might happen here. Okay, we let's say we have a new data which is similar to this one, and uh, it may appear here, right? Then uh, we have same problem. Uh, this new data is very similar to this one, so it does, its class value is supposed to be same as this one, but actually uh, because of this B two line, its class value is opposite to this one, right? So it's another problem. So that being said, the P2 line is, is no good, okay? It, it, so it's just, just a little bit of change here that it, it's going to change the class value of data, okay? So we don't like it. So on the other hand, in P1 line, okay, we have a pretty much big margin here, okay? So uh, if we have a new data similar to this one, like this, we still have, we have the same class value with this one. For this data, it, let's say we have a new uh, similar data here, then still it has same class values. Okay, so P1, in that sense, P1 is better than P2. Okay. So in the previous slide, uh, we see P1 line is better than P2. Uh, in this slide, uh, I'm going to explain why B1 is better than B2 in a more uh, formal uh, mathematical way. So actually in SBM, uh, the line we are looking for is the line with maximum margin. Okay. Then uh, what is maximum margin? What is the margin? So uh, the margin of line is defined uh, as follows. Uh, suppose we have line P1, okay, then for every line we have two parallel line to that. So in this case, P1, we have two parallel line like this, B11 and B12. So this parallel line, so here this one actually goes through this data, which is the closest to this, to the line, okay, it goes through this data. Okay, there's the first line, first parallel line. It's called B11. And the other, and there is another parallel line which goes through this data, which is closest to this line in this side. Okay, so this parallel line goes to, through this data on this side. Okay, so it's called B12. So uh, the definition of margin of this data, this line, is the gap the distance between these two lines. That's the definition of margin of this line. Okay. So same thing here in uh, line B2. It also has two parallel line. Okay. B21, B22. And uh, similarly, B21 goes through uh, this data, which is the closest to this line in this side and B22 goes through uh, this data again which is closest to this line in this side okay so we have two parallel line and uh, the gap the distance between these two lines B21 B22 is the margin of this line okay so uh, in SVM the line we are looking for is the line with maximum margin. So 
if you compare B1 with B2, B1 has definitely large margin than uh, B2, right? So that's why we prefer B1 to uh, B2 in SVM. So in the previous slide, uh, SVM uh, actually is looking for line with maximum margin. Uh, in this slide, I'm going to explain uh, why the line with the maximum margin is the best classifier, the optimal classifier. I'm going to explain it here. So uh, Bafnik, who is the, the kind of inventor of SVM, has uh, proved the following theorem here. So here, uh, H is VG dimension. We're going to talk about it in next slide and onward. And uh, D, don't worry about D and M. You can, uh, you can assume these are constant once the data, are, data is given, okay? So what matter is this row, okay? So row is the margin of line, okay? And H is the virtual dimension of classifier. So what it means here is if margin row increases, then it decreases this, then the whole thing actually decreases, right? This is minimum. So if this increases, it decreases this, and uh, indirectly you decrease the value of H. So in summary, I, you can say uh, if, we, if you increase the value of margin, you, then you decrease the virtual dimension of classifier, okay? So we say uh, if you uh, maximize the margin, then you want to minimize Vichy dimension. Okay. Then uh, you may wonder, you know, what what is Vichy dimension and uh, why reducing Vichy dimension is the uh, best best choice in uh, classification. Okay, we're gonna explain it in next slide. Uh, in the uh, previous slide, uh, I said uh, the maximizing margin actually uh, reduces the virtual dimension of classifier. And I also uh, mentioned that uh, reducing uh, virtual dimension is, is a very a nice strategy to practice when you build classifier. Okay, so in this slide, uh, we're going to talk about what exactly is Vichy dimension. Okay, what is the definition? So Vichy dimension, uh, it, it, its full name is Vafnik Cherbonenkis dimension. So in short, we call it Vichy dimension. These are the person's name who uh, kind of invented this concept. So Vichy dimension is actually uh, the measure of the complexity or flexibility of classifier, okay? So, classifier with high Vichy dimension means that classifier is very com very complex, and uh, classifier with low Vichy dimension means that classifier is very simple, okay? So that's the measure of the com complexity of algorithm. Uh, in old days, uh, when you measure the complexity of classifier, uh, people thought maybe the number of parameter is the measure of complexity of classifier. Okay, so for example, in in neuralnet neuralnet case, uh, when you have the neuralnet has many nodes or many hidden layers, then definitely it has many parameters. So it is definitely a complex network and complex classifier. On the other hand, if you reduce the number of nodes or number of hidden layers, the network shrinks and network becomes simpler. Right? So it's quite a reasonable choice that you know, the, the number of parameters is the measure of complexity of classifier. But the uh, Bafnik, uh, who is 
kind of I said the kind of father of the SBM method. He proposed a new <coughs> method, new concept called the Vichy dimension, and he claimed that uh, the the Vichy dimension is the better estimate of the complexity of algorithm. Okay. So, uh, for example, here. Let's say you have this function, okay, fx equals a times sine bx, and it has only two parameters, okay, but uh, this function virtually can can uh, discriminate any uh, labeling of one-dimensional data, okay. So uh, this this has only two parameters. But this function can represent very complex cases of one-dimensional data. Okay, so this is an example of you know the case where the, the number of parameter is not a, a good measure of the complexity of algorithm. Okay, so Befnik argues that the flexibility or complexity of classifier. Can be uh, characterized, okay? Can be characterized by a uh, term called Vichy dimension. Okay? This is the proper term, proper measure of uh, estimating the complexity of classifier. So that is the definition of Vichy dimension of classifier. Okay, uh, let's take a look at the formal uh, definition of Vichy dimension here. Uh, before we define the de definition of uh, Vichy dimension, uh, we have to define something else first. We have to define shutter first. So what is shutter? Shutter means, let's say we have classifier F, okay, and we also have some input data, x1, x2, xr, okay, and every input data has its own label y. So like x1, y1, x2, y2, xr, yr, okay? Then uh, uh, for now, let's assume y value is binary, okay? So class value is binary, okay? Then how many combination of labeling of y do we have? How many uh, label combinations do we have in y, okay? Since there are all uh, y values here, we have two to the power of all labelings, right? So, uh, for example, here let's take a look. Uh, so now our classifier is linear classifier, so it is a line. Okay, our classifier is a line. Let's suppose that is the classifier we have, and uh, let's say we have uh, three data points. So input data, we have a three input data and our classifier is linear, okay? So let's take these are the, the classifier and the data, okay? Then uh, how many uh, class labels do we have? Since we have three data and the class value is binary, we have uh, eight class labelings, right? Two times, two times, two. So we have these eight class labels for three data, right? Everything is minus, everything is plus. Somewhere in between you have many combinations, minus, plus, plus, or plus, minus, minus, etc. Okay, so these are all possible cases of class labeling for three data, right? Shatter means, shatter means if your classifier, in this case linear, if your classifier can correctly classify all these cases, okay, then it is called your classifier shatters three point. Okay, let me repeat. So you have three data points, okay, then 
you think of all possible cases of labeling. So in this case, we have three data, and the class value is binary. So we have eight labelings, eight possible labelings, okay? And your classifier, linear line, right, can correctly classify every case here. Then we say your classifier shatters this data. Okay, so in this case, in this case, you draw line here, one hundred percent accurate. In this case, you draw line here. This is okay. In this case, you draw line here. So for every case, you are able to classify correctly. Okay, so we say in this case, your classifier shattered three point. Okay, that's definition of a shatter. So let's increase the number of data one by one. Okay, so now we have four data points and your classifier is again linear, linear line, linear classifier. Then uh, your classifier, linear classifier can not shatter four points because you don't have to consider uh, all uh, possible cases, 16 cases. So you pick one case here. This is, you have four data and uh, their class labels are as follows, plus, minus, minus, plus, okay? So in this particular case, your classifier is line and uh, it cannot classify correctly using line, right? It's impossible, right? So if the number of data is four, your data, your, uh, your classifier cannot correctly for sum of data. Okay, right? So this classifier cannot shatter four points. Okay? So that is the definition of shatter. Okay? So in the previous slide, we have seen the definition of shatter, right? And uh, we are almost done with uh, the definition of Vichy dimension now. So the definition of Vichy dimension is actually the maximum number of points that can be shattered by the classifier F. So in previous example, in previous slide, the your classifier, we assume that it is linear. Okay, it it can shatter three data points, right? And it cannot shatter four data points, right? In pre from the previous slide, right? So, which dimension of the linear classifier in previous slide is now three, because by definition here, which dimension is the maximum number of points that can be shattered. So, your classifier, linear classifier, can shatter three data points, but not four, right? So, the maximum number of points to be shattered is three. So linear classifier is which dimension of linear classifier is three. Okay. So that is the definition of VC dimension. And as I said, a VC dimension it, it represents the you know, complexity or ex flexibility or expressive power, whatever you 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 call. Okay, it's the complexity, flexibility, or expressive power of your classifier F. Okay, so let's take a look at some example of which dimension of some classifiers. So as, as we have seen in previous slide, the, the which dimension of linear classifier is three. We have seen this in previous slide, okay? And uh, because it can shatter three data points, okay? And, but it cannot uh, shatter four data points, so maximum point to be shattered is three. And, uh, and let's move on. And uh, But actually, uh, one of the problem of FPC dimension is when you build your own uh, classifier or you, you want to analyze the FPC dimension of you know, the current classifier algorithm, so the, one of the problem is sometimes it is very, very uh, di difficult to calculate the 
which demands of a certain classifier. Okay, in many cases, actually, it's very, very difficult. Okay. So in linear classifier case, it is easy to calculate the Vichy dimension of linear classifier. We know it is 3, etc., right? But in many real cases, it's almost impossible or, or very, very difficult to calculate the Vichy dimension of the classifier. Okay. So its Vichy dimension is kind of a theoretical concept. Okay. So its concept is very reasonable, very, very novel, very nice. But the problem is, from the practical point of view, it's, it's, it is very, very difficult to compute it. Okay, that is one of the problems. Okay. So, uh, if you are able to calculate Vichy dimension, it's very, very helpful. You can see how complex the, uh, uh, the algorithm is. And the, the best advantage, if you can calculate the Vichy dimension of classifier is, this is the most important part of calculating uh, Vichy dimension. If you calculate, if you know the Vichy dimension of classifier, then you can estimate the test error of the classifier in the future. That's a big advantage of calculating Vichy dimension. Uh, I'm going to explain this thing in next slide. Okay, but uh, if you know the value of Vichy dimension, and, and then you you are able to estimate test error of the classifier. Uh, but uh, problem is, you know, in many cases, it is very very difficult to compute Vichy dimension of the classifier. Okay. In a previous slide, I said if you uh, calculate the Vichy dimension of classifier, then you are able to estimate the test error of the classifier in the future. Okay, that's a big actually breakthrough of the classifier, right? So in this slide, I'm going to explain why why can we we can estimate the test error by using a uh, Vichy dimension. Uh, this method is called structural risk minimization. In short, it is called SRM. Yeah, this terminology is very fancy, but there is not this not very difficult concept actually. Okay, so what SRM means is let me take a look at here. Okay, this is the formula of SRM. Test error actually is limited by training error and this term okay so you know what this training error and test error is training error is the error from a training data but which we already know okay it's it's, it's not very important okay we already know the training error okay but what matter is test error so that test error is the error of data in the future so it is very very difficult to estimate it but this srm as the test error is limited to the training error plus this term okay so when you train your algorithm you know the training error so with this one we know and what is this okay this one here if you look at this n is number of data we know that right and this new is also constant this is the confidence level in statistics right like 0.95% or 99%, etc. This is the, the constant confidence level in statistics. So this is constant too. So this is constant and number of data is constant. So what, so what is remaining is this H. So this H is the Vichy dimension of classifier. Okay. So if you look, look at this formula carefully, if H, which dimension of the classifier is very high, this term goes up. Okay, this term goes up. You may wonder this may go down with the H, but this, this, this increases in a logarithm rate. This increases in linear rate. Okay, so this grows fast. Okay, so if you increase H, which dimension of classifier, then this whole thing goes up. That means the boundary of test error goes up, right? 
That means it's quite possible that we have high test, uh, high value of test error. Okay. On the other hand, uh, if you reduce the Bush dimension of classifier H here, it goes down. Then this value goes down, right? So that means this whole thing goes down and it actually reduces the value of test error. So if you reduce the value of which dimension of your classifier, actually it reduces the test error. Okay? That's why this which dimension is very important okay, in uh, estimating the test error, the error in the future. Okay? That's the, the why this uh, you know the which dimension is important and is what matters in uh, in predicting the future data. Okay. So this Bethany proved this theorem, and uh, it, it, it he proved that the test error is limited to this training error plus this term. And, okay. So from this theorem, we see that if you reduce the Fish dimension, actually it reduces test error. That's why reducing Fish dimension is very important in your classifier. So now we have seen that uh, by using Fish uh, dimension, we are able to estimate the boundary of test error. So in this slide, let's take a look at these two classifiers classifier 1 and classifier 2 and this is the training error of classifier 1 and this is training error of classifier 2 and this line is the boundary of test error by using which dimension by using SRM okay and this is the boundary of test error by using SRM and which dimension as well so which one do you prefer? Okay. Okay. As for a training error, this one has low error. Okay. But again, training error doesn't matter actually. Okay. It's not very important. What matter is test error. But if you compare the uh, test error, we do not know the exact value of test error because test error is the data in of the future, right? But we do know the boundary of test error. So if you look at the boundary of test error, this one has higher error boundary and this one has lower boundary of test error, right? So if you choose between these two, you have to go with classifier 2. Because even though its training error is a little higher, its estimate of test error is lower than classifier, okay? So you have to go with classifier in this case. In this picture, uh, this x axis represents the complexity of uh, classifier, whatever the model is. Okay, and this is the test error. Okay, so uh, training error goes down. Keep it keeps going down as the model comp becomes complex. It it keeps it, it keeps going down, right? But at, as the model becomes more complex, its Vichy dimension increases, right? That's, that's the definition of Vichy dimension. So which, you know, which level of complexity you want to cut, okay, you want to select. You want to cut here, you want to cut here, 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 here. So, so if you, by using SRM, this is the boundary of test error, okay? By using this Vichy dimension and training error in the previous slide, using SRM. SRM says by using training error and uh, the Vichy dimension, we can estimate the boundary of test error. Okay, so this one is the boundary of test error. Okay, so you calculate the minimum value of this boundary here. So that's the proper, that's the proper place to cut, to stop, okay, for the uh, complexity of your model. Okay. Okay, uh, we have learned uh, many algorithms so far, okay, and uh, we learned uh, Perceptron and Neuralad, MLP with backpropagation, 
and we learned uh, decision tree and random forest and also here we study uh, support vector machines okay and so uh, what I'm gonna say in this slide is uh, actually some of these algorithms are interrelated okay and uh, it, it is like uh, one you have one algorithm okay and uh, that algorithm is stuck at some point then uh, people will come up with uh, another breakthrough and uh, that, al that algorithm now you know, evolve into a different algorithm into different level okay so that's what's happening uh, in many machine learning algorithms so this slide shows the example of this evolution process so in the beginning we had uh, perceptron and as we know, uh, you know, perceptron uh, is linear classifier, a kind of toy thing. So uh, to make this nonlinear, uh, we come up with uh, neural net MLP. Okay, so uh, that way, uh, perceptron becomes nonlinear classifier. Okay, and uh, another example is we had decision tree and uh, even though the decision tree is kind of classical uh, method its performance is not very uh, impressive so uh, it kind of evolved into a random forest which contains a lot of uh, decision trees okay so uh, the random forest is an ensemble method as you know and it is a kind of uh, in a state of art technique okay so go back to perceptron uh perceptron was linear so there is another uh method uh to make the uh perceptron non-linear uh, that is the spot vector machines okay and uh if you look at the uh, the from perceptron to arrow from perceptron to uh mlp neural net the method we used was you know multi-layer means we add a hidden layer and the activation function is now uh, sigmoid and we uh, use gradient, gradient descent for training right so that way by using these techniques now we change perceptron to uh, neural net MLP and uh, another direction of e evolution from a perceptron is spot vector machine and here the technique we used is a uh, maximum margin okay and uh, to make this classifier non-linear they use a kernel technique and also for training they use a convex optimization method okay so by by using these techniques uh, the perceptron has evolved into a, a, a spot vector machines okay and uh, yeah later on in this uh, semester uh, the neural lag evolved into a deep learning okay so neural lag neural lag has some its own problems okay as uh, is, for example it has you know the vanishing gradient problems etc okay and uh, it has too many parameters okay so uh, because of that uh, the, the the applicability of neural net is quite limited okay so uh, spot vector machine was uh, is, is very very strong algorithm okay so uh, people come up with uh, uh, a new algorithm from uh, neural net called deep learning and uh, the technique they used was uh, has deep layer means deep layer means many many hidden layers and uh, some deep learning algorithm uh, has uh, weight sharing techniques and uh, some others use layer wise training okay so using those techniques uh, neural net has evolved into a uh, deep learning algorithm okay so what i'm going to say here is many algorithms are related okay and uh, one is kind of ancestor of the other algorithm okay and its algorithms 
algorithms keep evolving into different algorithms, okay? So in the future, uh, yeah, who knows, the deep learning may evolve into something different, and the support vector machine here also may evolve into something different, okay? So uh, that's the, the, the story of this slide. Yeah, uh, so far uh, we have seen that uh, maximizing margin uh, reduces facial dimension of classifier and uh, reducing uh, facial dimension actually reduces the test error of classifier. Okay, so that's why we're gonna make you uh, we're gonna maximize the mar margin of line in SVM. Okay, so let's get back to the maximum margin. So as I said, the maximizing margin is is very good based on your intuition. Not only by intuition, uh, by the computational learning theory, as I said because of the, uh, it, it reduces Vichy dimension and the Vichy dimension reduces the test error, okay? So that's what I said. So when you find the line, maximum line like this, uh, there are a couple of uh, terminology here, okay? We have a two parallel line, okay? Which goes through uh, data, which is the closest to the line, okay? And the same thing here, we have another parallel line here and it passes through uh, these data which are closest to the line, okay? So this is classifier, this solid line, and this data, the circle data, are called support vector, okay? So you have to know this terminology. So this is support vector line, support vector machine line, and uh, these data are called support vector. Okay. Uh, why do we care about spot vector? If you look at carefully here, when you when you decide this line, what matter is actually these support vectors only. Okay, all the other data for all the other data, it doesn't make any impact in determining this line. Okay, when you decide determine this line, okay. You only use these three lines to draw uh, this line. Nothing but these three. All the others are, as it doesn't matter in determining this line. Okay, so when you uh, find the linear line SBM, actually what matter is these spot vectors. Okay, so that's that's the spot vector. And you're gonna you're gonna talk about this later, more. So I said the uh, SBM is a classifier uh, with the maximum margin. Okay, so uh, in this slide, uh, we're gonna define the definition of margin in a, a mathematical form. Okay, so uh, let's say we have, uh, so this is double X plus B is the line we are looking for. And suppose we have two other a uh, parallel line like double x plus b equals one and double x plus b equals minus one suppose we have two parallel data a line here okay so in this case the gap the margin between these two line okay these two line is defined as this Okay, let's say M is the gap between these two lines, okay, then M is defined as this, okay, and from uh, these equations, W X plus minus X minus is 2, so this is 2, so this becomes 2 divided by norm of W, okay. Uh, you may not may not familiar with this this norm. Okay, this norm actually means this. Okay, we call it a second normal form, and it is the definition is a square root of the sum of square of W i. Okay, so that's the definition of, of W norm. 
Okay. So you want to maximize margin. Okay, that's what this SVM does. Okay, then um, the definition of margin is given as this. Okay, two over uh, W norm. Okay, W norm is this. Okay. So that's definition. That's mathematical definition of margin. So we're gonna maximize this M, which is this in SVM. Okay. Uh, finally, you you may wonder. Okay, in, in the beginning, uh, I assumed that if we, suppose we have line, we have two parallel line, and uh, for each parallel line. It, the right right hand side is one or minus one. Okay, so, so you may wonder why does it have to be one or minus one? You can be some some other number like w x plus b equals c or something like it. Okay, you may wonder like you may wonder. Okay, you know, right hand side can be any number, right? So actually, uh, you know. Yeah, you're right. Okay, actually, you can say W X plus B equals C or whatever. Okay, but in this case, I suppose W X plus B equals C. Then we divide this equation, okay, by C, which is here, right? Then uh, now, if we if we uh, calculate, you you try to find uh, this value. W divided by C and P divided by C, then the problem is same. Okay, it doesn't make difference. Okay, so simply put, we have we want to you look for line, and uh, we have uh, there are two parallel lines, right? And we can assume these lines, for these lines, the right hand side is one or minus one. Okay, basically we can normalize it. And we can assume you now the, the right hand side is always one or minus one. Okay, and this makes our computation much simpler. Okay. So we have seen the definition of margin of the line in a previous slide. So SBM actually uh, is gonna maximize the margin, right? So in this slide, uh, let's take a look at a line. Let's say this is the maximum margin line, okay? And uh, these are, let's say, uh, spot, vect spot vectors of this line, okay? Then, uh, so also suppose this line is represented as Wx plus b equals zero, okay? Actually, the goal of learning in SVM is you're going to estimate this W value and B value. That is the goal of uh, learning SVM. So suppose this line is WX plus B equals 0. Then we have two parallel lines like this. And this line goes through uh, the support vector here in this side. And this line also goes through this data, this spot vector here in this side, okay? So we have always two parallel lines and this data goes through uh, these spot vectors, okay? So uh, this solid line is Wx plus B. Then uh, this line is represented as Wx plus B equals one. And this line is represented as wx plus b equals minus one, okay? So this line represents this one and wx plus b equals one means this line, wx plus b equals minus one means this one, okay? And for this one, this is the definition of margin, this m, okay? We defined this in previous slide, okay? So the goal of uh, SVM is, the goal of SVM is, we're going to maximize margin, right? So we're going to maximize this M margin. M is margin. We're going to maximize this. So M is this. So we're going to maximize this, okay? That's the goal of SVM. But at the same time, we have some other conditions, okay? For every class 1 value, for every, every class 1 value, that value should be 
above this line, right? That's definition, okay? Every class 1 value should be above this line, okay? Otherwise, it's violation of definition, okay? So every data, class 1, ba one data should be above this line, right? And every minus 1 class value should be below this line, right? That's our goal. So our final goal of SBM learning is we are looking for a line wx plus b equals 0, okay? We are going to find this line, okay? But at the same time, we're going to maximize this. So this line, we are looking for this, a certain line which maximize this margin, okay? M equals 2 over w norm, okay? And also at the same time, we want to satisfy these two conditions saying every data here, every data above this line is class 1, every data below this line is minus 1. That's our goal of SBM learning. Let me repeat quickly. We are looking for a line, okay? And uh, for this line, we want to maximize M margin, right? You want to maximize margin. At the same time, we're going to satisfy two conditions. The first condition is every data above this line is 1. Every data below this line is minus 1. Okay? So that is the goal of SVM. So I said the SVM uh, maximizes the margin of line. And also, it, uh, there are two other conditions to satisfy the first condition is to remember the two parallel lines. Okay, every data, every data above the the, the upper parallel line should be a uh, class one, and every data below the, the lower uh, parallel line should be uh, minus one, right? So uh, you have to rep represent those conditions in mathematical form, right? So uh, let's do it. So for the for the first condition it says every every data below the line this one its class should be minus one, right? I told you. Then you wanna represent this sentence like this Wx plus V is less than minus one if class value is minus one. Okay? So every data below this line below this line is minus 1. That's what it says here. In a similar way, uh, every data above this line, for, for every data above this line, its class value is 1. Okay? So you're going to uh, represent this in, in, a, in this form. Okay? So Wx plus b is greater than or equal to 1 if y is 1. But this means every data, or every class value 1, it is above this line, okay? So, uh, so these two conditions are represented now in uh, mathematical inequality, okay? So we have two conditions. So finally here, let's combine these two, okay? Instead of two, we better off, we want to be better off having just one uh, condition, right? So we combine these two and by combining these two, we have one condition saying y times wx plus b is greater than 1. Okay? So it is interesting, but it, it is true. So it, it, if you look carefully, it's so y is 1, y value is 1, y is 1, then wx plus b is greater than 1, which is this. It's correct, right? If y is minus 1, then this direction is reversed, right? So wx plus b is less than minus 1, right? So uh, it is true here, okay? So both conditions are represented here in one condition. Okay, so you're going to use this, this one as a condition of SBM. Yeah, so I said the goal of SBM learning is first. Uh, we maximize the margin, and second, 
we satisfy two conditions, which is described in previous slide, right? So we're going to represent the whole thing in a mathematical form here. Okay, so the goal, we have two goals. The first goal is we're going to maximize the margin. So the definition of margin is this, right? So we're going to maximize this, or you're going to minimize this bottom part, right? So you want to maximize this or minimize this. So that's the same, identical. So you want to minimize this. That's first goal. And second goal is, as I said in the previous slide, the data should satisfy this. Okay, These two conditions are combined into this condition. Okay, I told you in previous slide. So finally, this is the final goal of SBM. We minimize this, I told you here, we minimize this subject to this, okay? So we want to minimize this, also at the same time, we have to satisfy these conditions, okay? So this is the final goal of SBM, okay? So we are looking for W and B value, which Minimize this and also at the same time, which satisfies this. That is our goal. That is goal of learning in SVM.